So now in this video, we're going to start with coloring it in our character. Let's first begin with selecting our color palette. And for her skin tone, I'm going to go with a very lighter pinkish color tone. And then since she is our gothic uh, Snow White, I'm going to have a nice dark black that'll go for her clothing as well as her hair. And then I've also added some different shades of what her skin tone could be like, like a mid-tone and a darker tone. And of course, let's not forget her apple. Now I want to go in there and start organizing my files a bit. They're a little uh, messy right now. And by files, I mean my layers. I'm going to just start grouping everything and you know organizing it a little better so that when I work and as I keep working things will be easier to find. In addition to writing down uh, the names in your groups you can also label your uh, groups and layers a different color this way your files will be much easier to find. So just to make note, when you are grouping things together in your layers, you can hold down shift on your keyboard, select all the layers from bottom to top or top to bottom, and then hit command or control G on your laptop or your keyboard. And what this does is, is it automatically groups everything together. And then you can add your color label uh, depending on what the different groups are. So now let's begin with the underpainting. Remember to do it on a layer that's below our sketch. And I am actually also hitting Alt or Option on my keyboard to pull up the eyedropper tool. And this is so that I can select the colors that I have made on the right, that little color palette there. And then I can just instantly just uh, select that color and just quickly go in there and paint. In this stage, we're, we're simply going to just work on filling in the space. Eventually, I'm going to go in there and use the pen tool and clean it up and really uh, add in some sharp lines and clean it and really just clean this up. Now I want to go ahead and color select that black that I have down there and I'm going to fill up her dress. Um, I want to give her a very kind of cool, uh, youthful looking dress because, you know, Snow White is also a very young character. I didn't want to really give her a gown um, because I was thinking in terms of how young she was and how I kind of wanted to be her to be a cooler, younger, more modern looking Snow White as well. Now I also think I am done with using the neutral gray background because eventually when I kind of put my character up, I'm going to have a lighter background on it. And I'm going to, since I'm going to be adding in the color now, I want to make sure that it is not too bright or too dull. So I think at this stage, pretty much when you're doing your underpainting is when you want to have your background color selected as well. And I'm also going to um, make the image a little smaller. You can hit C on your keyboard. And what this does is it brings up the crop tool. The crop tool is a very convenient uh, tool. For example, it creates this kind of grid around my image and I can just select and move in the parts that I don't need anymore and then I just hit enter on my keyboard and all those parts have been deleted and the part that I have cropped is only visible. And now that we're kind of done with our underpainting and we've selected our background color, I'm going to create a new folder, a new layer, and this is going to be on top of my underpainting and my sketch. And we're also going to select the pen tool now. You can do this by hitting P on your keyboard, or if you look to the left on your toolbar, there's like a fountain pen nib. Uh, this is a pen tool, and the way you use this is by kind of making these lines, as I am, all around the character. I currently am going to be creating a shape of what the arm is going to be like. 
And the reason I'm doing this is because I want to have crisp, hard edges. And the fastest way that, to do that is with the pen tool. And you want to kind of circulate and draw all around that shape. And then eventually go back to the first point that you laid. And this creates like a very thin, you know, barely visible line. But if you look closely, you'll see it. Then you can hit right click and this opens up another window and you can simply hit make selection and it creates a kind of a selection around the shape that you had outlined. And then I'm just gonna color select and go ahead and use the paint bucket tool and fill that space up. Make sure you're doing everything on a new layer. Every single shape that I'm gonna create now will be on a new layer. And now that I have finished with the arms, I'm going to move on to the leg. You know, this is a very uh, tricky tool to use, but once you get the hang of it, it's quite simple. The way to get uh, a lot of you know, long curved lines is to hold down your mouse button, your left mouse button as you're drawing and kind of drag that point al along and that allows you to create a very smooth line. Um, in the beginning, you might notice that you're going to be creating a lot of little points as you draw along with your pen tool. That's fine. A lot of people do that in the beginning, but once you get the hang of it, it'll get much easier and faster and you will be using less points. Now I'm going to continue on with the other leg. Remember to do it on a new layer. I am also making my shapes a little more angular uh, as, I, as I outline. Uh, this is only for a stylistic preference, my personal one, but if you are trying this out for the first time, you can stick to your sketch. And now let's start outlining the dress. This is kind of the main part of the whole thing. Now I'm going to move this layer up a little bit because I do want to make sure that it is overlapping her legs as well as her arm. I'm going to move her left arm over that dress uh, because I don't think I want it to be hidden. I'm done with the majority of the character. Let's move on to her face. Sometimes when I am painting and I realize that maybe my angles are too sharp, I just go ahead and take the brush tool and I kind of loosely go in there and paint in that curve. This is like your, you know, you're adding that softness to it. Sometimes the pen tool can make your stuff look very, sh very strong and straight and edgy. Uh, and you kind of, if you need to soften it up a bit, just go ahead and use the brush. Um, you know, it's just to make very simple lines and to just smooth it out a little. Now I just want to go ahead and add in the outline for her hair. So I'm just going to hide the layer that I, ha I had drawn with her, with her face on it. And I'm going to do the outline for her hair. This is just easier for me to see. When I had the uh, face shown before, it was harder to see my underdrawing. So, you know, I clicked on the little eye I uh, um, symbol next to the layer and I hid that and when I'm done creating the shape I will click on it again and my face will come back. Now I also wanted to add in her bangs as I had done in the sketch. Very simple way to do this is to just click on the layer that the face is on and I just lower the opacity a little so I can see my underdrawing and I just erase out that part of the face. And now it looks like she has bangs. And I'm also clicking on the eye symbol on and off uh, to hide the sketch just to see how my uh, color 
stage is looking and it's actually looking really good. I'm, I'm quite happy with it. Um, so you can keep doing this. You can choose whether to leave that sketch on the entire time you paint or, you know, toggle it on and off like I am. Again, taking in the eraser tool to just lightly get rid of those very bumpy kind of lines that were uh, on her face just now. And I'm going to turn my sketch back on. It was hidden at the moment. Remember that entire folder is over my color drawing. And this is because uh, I want to be able to start putting in the little bit of detail that I had in that sketch onto this color drawing. So I've moved it over that group and I'm going to constantly toggle it uh, on and off so I can keep uh, making sure that my drawing and color version is coming along well just like my sketches. And now let's go ahead and start outlining her eyes. I'm going to select a very light blue color to do this. Um, you know, not something, something that has the same value as her skin. Nothing too dark or too bright. And you don't need to necessarily use white. Uh, using white to do your eyes can be a little um, unusual in the sense that it can feel a little too unrealistic or a little too stylized. And now I'm going to go in there and create the shape for her eyelash, like essentially the entire black line that will show the separation between her eyelid and her pupil. And I'm going to kind of draw out a shape of this line going across the eye and then create these mini triangles and peaks to kind of uh, insinuate a very stylized looking pair of eyelashes. And now let's keep continuing with the other eye. Then go ahead and erase out the pupil because the eyelash is what was the indication that separated the blue pupil part from her eyelids. Now I'm going to be adjusting my brushes and selecting that darker skin tone and I'm going to draw in some aspects of her facial features. And the reason for doing this again is because I want my character to feel a little more organic. Uh, right now of course it's too clean and a little too perfect. By adding in these brush strokes I'm able to just give it a more drawn quality, like a slightly more hands-on feel to it. And now, of course, I'm going to select a much bigger brush. And I have also left my dual brush on in this case. That will give my uh, painting a little more texture. And I'm just drawing in her pupils. And with a lighter green, I'm just going to go in there and draw in the rims of her uh, pupils 
I want to just kind of give an indication of what direction she's looking at as well. And again with that same kind of deep uh, pinkish red, I'm going to draw in her lips. I'm just going to give her a very thin kind of a lip shape. I don't want it to be too extravagant right now. Now with a slightly darker brown, I'm going to go in and paint in some shadows using my Photoshop brush. And I made this layer into a multiply. You can just click on that little window on the top. And this allows me to make any uh, layers that are beneath this multiply layer visible. For example, if I draw over it, I won't be erasing anything. Rather, it will be an addition to that. It's almost like a drawing or painting on top of a drawing. So both will be visible. to go in and start adding uh, some shadow to her legs as well what you can do is to make sure that you only add that color to her legs is hold down control or command on your keyboard and then select the layer that you want to paint on what this allows is for me to only select that one layer and that way when I'm drawing or painting I don't go outside of the lines essentially so I've selected a very soft brush with my dual brush uh, properties on as well. And I'm very lightly kind of painting in some shadow there. Um, you always want to add like a very light pink on parts of her body, like the knees, the elbows, a little bit on her nose, also some on the fingers, as well as a little bit on the ankles. This kind of is a very uh, simple yet efficient way of uh, adding a little color to your character so she doesn't look entirely pale. On a new layer with the brush tool, let's paint in her shoes. Now once you're done bringing a little warmth to your character's skin tone, uh, we will move on to the next video where I will show you how to add more detail to her face, to her hair, as well as add a little more uh, embroidery to her clothing as well, and then bring some warmth to the overall painting. Now, in this video, we are going to start adding in more detail to our character. I'm mostly going to be using the brush tool at this stage. And of course, you can choose to work on separate layers if you desire, uh, or you can work on the same layer that your face is on as well. I'm just going to start adding in a little more shadow and maybe widen her face and her neck a little bit more. And now with the shape dynamics on, on my brush, as well as with a slightly thinner, more angled uh, brush, I'm going to go in there and start outlining her eyes as well. 
And also, if you want to rotate your canvas, you can just hit R on your keyboard, and this brings up a little hand. And using your mouse, kind of pull along the screen, and this allows you to rotate your canvas um, entirely in 360 degrees. It's, it's very convenient and a great way to get to those hard-to-reach kind of places. going to go ahead and select the layer where the back part of her eye is and I want to erase out that very heavy strong gray that I have there and I want to add a light slightly more bluer and softer uh, color to the eyes. Going to go back again with the brush tool and just keep working on the eyes and, and fixing those lines. selecting a purple color just similar to her hair I want to start adding in a little bit of eye shadow to her eyes um, this is also a very stylized way of creating an eyelid making sure that that layer is set to multiply with a nice big soft brush just go in there and loosely start painting in those uh, that eyeshadow And now, of course, because I want to make our character look a little more sassy, I'm going to thicken the lash line and make it look much more uh, heavier. Now, I think I'm not very happy with the green on her eyes. I think it looks a little strange, so I'm going to make her pupils entirely black or purple. Um, I think because of the angle our character is looking at, those lines seemed a little funny. So in order to make it work, I think I'm just going to make them all black and maybe add in a very soft shadow with my brush to kind of uh, blend it all in seamlessly. And when selecting the eye layer, I just held down command or control on my keyboard and selected that layer. That was the way I got the selection around the pupil. I think it looks a little better now and almost enhances the gothic and otherworldly aspect to our Snow White character. Now I'm using the same darker color that I used for the shadow for her neck and face. I want to add a small shadow underneath her nose. This is going to give my character more dimension in that area. I'm going to go ahead and soften the uh, shadow on her neck a bit. I'm going to use a very soft brush uh, and I'm just going to add and uh, like very light brush strokes going across so it almost looks like a gradient and you want to make sure that the top part is dark and the bottom part is light because the darkness is coming from the shadow of her face resting on her neck this just makes my character a little more stylized um and didn't you know the right now uh or earlier the 
lines are a lot more rigid and harder, which I didn't like. And this softness is kind of almost like the shadow that I added around her knees and elbows as well. I also think I'm going to go ahead and darken the background a little bit because right now it's uh, the same or much similar in value to her legs. I think if I darken the background a little more, her skin is going to pull forward much more. Right now it was it was looking a little too light and ghostly, so I think it looks it looks better now. I want to lay a little more focus to her hand so I'm going to go in there with a brush and you can choose to do this on a different layer if you want and again I'm toggling my sketch on and off just to see where the apple would rest in her hand and with my brush I'm going to go in there and really start drawing these fingers uh, right now it seems a little too graphic and unreal uh, I want to add in her fingers so it looks like you know she has more than one and it looks like she's really holding that apple out. I'm going to just go ahead and zoom into her hand so you can get a better look at what exactly I'm doing. I'm actually not very happy with that shape so using the lasso tool again I only selected that small part of the hand and I rotated a little and now using my eraser I'm just going to clean up that edge so it doesn't look too messy and I think that this position for her hand works a lot better. I'm just going to indicate a, a darker brown in the background and also again with my brush I'm just adding it in to look as though a finger is leaning forward just a bit. And now making sure that the right layer is selected with my brush, uh, again I have my dual brush properties on, I'm just going to go in there and fix the dress. Remember I had inspired this dress by a spider web, so I want to make it a little more graphic-y and also stylize her entire... Um, I want to stylize the character a little bit more and push push it a little bit more. Now I want to create a shape on top of the dress. I'm going to be using the lasso tool to do this. If you take your mouse and press down on the lasso tool, you'll notice you have three different options. One to create st straight lines and one to also create curvy lines. So we're going to select the one where you can select straight lines. And right now I'm going to go ahead and quickly draw over the dress. Now I'm doing this instead of using the pen tool because I'm just going to keep it very rough and loose. When I use the pen tool it's when I want to be very precise with my outline. Um, and this is a little faster than using the pen tool, it just speeds up my process by a few seconds. Now I want to add in some more detail to her dress. So as I'd shown earlier, hit Ctrl or Command on your keyboard and select the layer that the dress was on. Then select a much lighter purple and let's draw in some lines. And now selecting a very big soft brush with the dual brush properties on, I'm going to just lightly paint in her skirt and I'm going to keep it very rough and loose. I want it to have a very gradient like feel to it. Now 
then I'm going to go ahead and take my brush and make it a very thin angled brush and then just draw these very loose lines on a new layer kind of going down across the dress. This is part of that web-like feel that I want to give to my character's outfit. And now selecting my eraser with an oval angled brush uh, and with a soft edge, I'm just going to erase this part out a little bit. And I'm just going to take the brush again and lay it down very loosely again. And now again with an angled brush and with my shape dynamics on, I'm just going to create these semicircular lines going across her dress. And now it's really starting to look like a web. Now keep drawing the lines all the way to the top of the dress. And now I want to go in there and start adding in uh, a little design element to her dress. Now using the lasso tool, like I showed you earlier, draw out some box-like shapes on a new layer. It's almost like the paneling on her dress. Now I'm just going to fill up these shapes with a lighter purple. Again, you know, you can adjust the opacity of the layer to uh, decide whether you want it to be darker or lighter. So now on a new layer with your brush and having the dual properties on, select that red from our color palette. Let's go ahead and start drawing in our apple. I'm going to rotate it a little to the left and I'm going to make it a little smaller so it fits better. Now I'm going to go ahead and take a light yellowish color and draw in these circles so it looks like our character has taken a bite from the apple. And now I'm going to go in there with an angled brush and start adding in more detail to my apple. Now with a softer brush, I'm going to go in there and start adding in a little more detail to the apple. I want to give it more highlight and just by doing this, it's going to make my apple look more rounded. I also want to make it look a little shinier than it does right now. Now I'm going to go in there with a harder brush and just add in a stronger highlight.
Now let's go ahead and start adding more color to our character's hair. Again, hold down Command or Control on your keyboard and select the layer of her hair. And with a lighter blue shade, I'm going to loosely start painting in, you know, not a highlight, but it kind of indicates where the lighting will be coming from. So if you notice, the inside of her hair is much darker because it is in shadow. And this kind of lighter blue is going to be more on the outside. But with the shade dynamics turned on and with a much lighter blue I'm going to go in there and draw these very thin lines indicating the direction of where her hair is flowing through they're just going to be very stylized I'm not going to go in there and add in uh, too many hairs and now with the same colored blue as the top of her hair, I'm going to go in there and start adding in strands of hair flowing outside of the shape of her hair. This is just so that her hair doesn't have that very like uh, rigid kind of tight edgy feeling to it. This adds a little more flow and fluidity to my character's look. I don't want to make it look too messy, so I'm going to erase a little bit of it out. And now I want to give my character some stockings. So on a new layer, again with that thin angled brush and making sure to select that same dark color from the color palette, I'm going to start drawing these um, angular lines going down in one direction. And then I'm going to flip my brush and start drawing those lines down in another direction. And now I want to add more of a goth element to her stockings so they just don't look very plain. Uh, I just erased it out very loosely and then with a brush with my shape dynamics on, I've just gone ahead and outlined that area and it very simply and easily shows that, you know, her stockings look kind of torn and it gives her more of a rebellious edgy side. So I'm quite happy with the direction in which my character is going in and I think I'm ready to move on to adding the final touches. In the next video we will focus on giving her a little more detail as well as warming up the entire character and fixing the background as well.